All right, good afternoon and welcome everyone to our April information session, Introduction to Measure Authoring Development Integrated Environment, or MADI. My name is Haley von Holst and I am the information session lead for the CMS Measures Management System contract supported by Battelle. And Nikki Hunter, the MADI product owner, will be our presenter this afternoon. So we are so happy to have uh, Nikki here to dig into this topic today. If you'd like to download today's slides, they'll be available on the CMS MMS Hub after the presentation. We will also post a recording of today's session and a Q&A summary on the MMS Hub in a few weeks. All right, uh, next slide, please. All right, and as part of the Measures Management Systems Outreach Task, CMS produces these information sessions throughout the year to educate about quality measurement topics and engage those interested in measure development and maintenance. So in short, we host these sessions uh, for you. So I highly encourage you all to submit questions throughout today's presentation. Um, you can use the Q&A feature near the bottom of your screen, and we'll try to address as many questions as we can at the end of the presentation. We'll include, we'll conclude with a question and answer segment. Um, and now I will uh, turn it over to Nikki to uh, dive into Maddie. Haley, hello everybody. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're really excited to dive into the topic of Maddie for you guys. Um, like Haley said, my name is Nikki Hunter. I am one of Maddie's product owners. Um, let's go to the next slide. All right, uh, we did touch a little bit on the high level agenda for the day and the goals, um, but I did just want to give you guys a little bit more in-depth agenda. Um, we'll start with that Matt and Bonnie overview, um, just to make sure everybody kind of understands those tools um, and how that then fed into Maddie. So then we'll go into a Maddie introduction, a Maddie transition plan, um, how to go about accessing Maddie. Then I'm actually going to do a Maddie demonstration. Um, so you guys can see the tool in action. Then at the end, we'll have a list of really awesome Maddie resources for everybody. And then we'll conclude with a Q&A session. Next slide, please. All right, I get the pleasure of presenting all of this today, but I have a really awesome team alongside with me. Um, so I did wanna take a minute to kind of show you guys all of our team and introduce everybody. Um, I won't go through and name everybody, um, but everybody on this slide is here today with us, and it is a critical part of the tool. We can go to our next slide, please. And here is the rest of our team. We do have a couple people on the slide in attendance today as well. Um, and then you can see at the bottom, we have our Funky Bunch, which is our Maddie Dev QA team, and our Legacy Exploders, which is a, our second Maddie Dev and QA team. Um, I couldn't include everybody because we would have a bunch of slides, um, but I did want to call them out specifically. We can move to our next slide. We also have some really awesome Maddie CMS uh, team members, um, Emmanuel, and he's our CMS uh, contracting officer representative or our core, and then Crystal, who is our CMS SME. Next slide, please. Okay, let's dive in to our content now. Um, you can see here, this is kind of a high level overview of that measure authoring, or it's not measure authoring, excuse me, measure life cycle. Um, it's a very expansive and complex life cycle. Um, a lot of pre-work is done. We have to do research. Um, we have to conceptualize what the measure will be. We have to specify the measures. And it's just a lot of work that happens prior to anybody even touching any of our tools. Um, currently, the measures are created in the measure authoring tool or the MAT and then tested in Bonnie. Um, each year, these measures, specific measures will then go through an annual update cycle or an AU where they are evaluated, updated and maintained to ensure that clinical relevancy and accuracy. So. As you can see in this diagram, it's a very much a circular process that just goes back and forth between a lot of these different pieces. We can jump to our next slide, please. 
Okay. So now I wanted to give you guys a little bit of background on Matt and Bonnie. For those of you that maybe weren't super familiar with these tools, um, these are our legacy tools and they have been around for measure developers for over a decade at this point. Um, Matt is the measure authoring tool. <laughs> it is a web application that allows those measure developers to author elect electronic clinical quality measures or ECQMs using clinical quality language or CQL, and then QDM or FHIR standards. The MAT allows our users to express that complex measure logic, as well as then export those measures in a bunch of different formats. Um, we export a human readable format, which is very user-friendly, easy to read, we also export a bunch of different machine readable formats, um, specifically an Elm, JSON, um, all of those different files there. Then we have Bonnie. Bonnie is a software tool, which is also a website um, that then allows those ECQM measure developers to test and verify the behavior of those ECQM logics. Um, users will export those test or those measures from Matt and then import the measures in to Bonnie. They'll construct synthetic test cases and then execute those synthetic test cases against the measure to ensure that the measure aligns with the intent the, of the measure that was specified initially and is just written accurately. Um, Bonnie was, oops. I lost my slide, sorry. <laughs> um, Bonnie was designed to integrate with the national recognized data standards. That's uh, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services um, quality reporting program uses for expressing that ECQM logic for machine to machine interoper interoperability. We can go to our next slide. So here is a brief history on our Matt and Bonnie. Um, Matt was released all the way back in 2011. Then Bonnie was released in 2014. So there was a while there where it was just the authoring and then Bonnie came in and allowed for that testing. Then in 2016, Matt was updated to support the QDM CQL specification of measures. And then in 2020, Matt was and Bonnie were updated to support FHIR. Next slide, please. So here is kind of what that workflow looks like currently in Matt and Bonnie. On the left-hand side, you can see some screenshots from Matt. That is where, like I've stated, the measures are authored. Then on the right here is some Bonnie screenshots. So they'll author in Matt, export from Matt, import into Bonnie, and then test. Should something in the measure not quite be specified correctly or they found something that they needed to add that they didn't account for. They then have to go back to Matt, open up Matt, edit the measure, re-export, re-import into Bonnie to then test. So it's just a very long process to make potentially small updates. Um, and so from there, along with some other things, we came up with the idea for Maddie. So we can move into our next slide. So now introducing Matty or the Measure Authoring Development Integrated Environment. Um, this is a software tool that redefines ECQM development and testing by making it a self-contained experience um, that allows users to dynamically author as well as test within that single application. Um, it is an intuitive, inclusive, and easy to use interface. It utilizes current technologies to provide a secure and efficient user experience. Um, and it also leverages modern um, human-centered design processes. So we're continuing, continuously incorporating user feedback, um, continuously reaching out to our users to understand uh, their needs better um, and their wants for the tool better, and then um, incorporating those into Maddie. Um, and then Maddie is 100% 508 compliant to ensure accessibility. Um, so our uh, visually impaired users are able to utilize Maddie as well as any other uh, potential uh, d not d uh, impairments that our users allows users to utilize Maddie. Next slide, please.
Okay. So why update? Um, it, it was time. In Matt and Bonnie, we had some unsupported tooling. Uh, Matt used Google Web Toolkit. Uh, I don't know if any of you are familiar with that, but it is no longer supported by Google. And then Bonnie utilized Ruby on Rails, um, an old version. So these uh, introduced some security risks to the tools. Along with that, we had this two separate tools and the two separate workflows. And then the tools uh, were initially designed by two different uh, companies. And so they had a different look and feel between the tools. Not only that, Bonnie functionality was spread across three different environments. Um, so for Bonnie to be fully supportive of the AU process, we had to have a Bonnie prior version that <laughs> utilized the previous QDM version of Bonnie. So right now we support QDM 5.5. We have Bonnie QDM, which supports the current uh, QDM version, QDM 5.6. And then we also had to introduce Bonnie Fire, which supports Bonnie Fire. So it was three tools that essentially did the same functionality, just supported those different standards. And that not only is confusing for users to make sure they're utilizing the correct Bonnie, it is a lot of upkeep for our team. <laughs> can move to our next slide. So a brief Maddie history. Um, in 2021, we proposed Maddie. Then in 2022, we were able to successfully release Maddie with QI core support. In 2023, we released with QDM support. So now Maddie supports both data models. And then currently, we are continuing to enhance Maddie for QI core as well as QDM. Then in June of 2024, so here in a few months, we will be sunsetting Matt and Bonnie. So they will, will no longer be available to utilize. Can move to our next slide. Here real quickly is a brief overview of what the workflow in Maddie looks like now. So on this left-hand side, you can see some of the authoring screens. And then on the right-hand side, you can see some of the testing screens. I don't know how apparent it is in these screenshots. It'll definitely be easier to see when I demo, but all you have to do is switch between the different tabs to go from authoring to testing. So it's very much so a more streamlined process that allows for quick back and forth and easier measure and measure development and testing. Next slide, please. Right, we wanted to talk about that Matt and Bonnie to Maddie transition. Next slide. On June 28th of 2024, Matt and Bonnie will be sunsetted. What this means is that Matt and Bonnie's data and websites will no longer be accessible um, to the user after that date. So next slide. So what that means is we've got to transition everybody over to Maddie. Um, some of these important dates here, um, again, that June 28th, they will no longer be accessible. Um, in April, we are continuing to release those key features to support QDM measure development and enhancements based on different prioritization discussions we've had, both with users as well as CMS. Then in May of 2024, Measure developers will begin migrating those measures, libraries, and test cases to Maddie. Um, most likely that process will have already begun ahead of time, um, but that is when it will really begin full force because this last AU cycle will have been completed. Then again, on June 28th, um, all our Matt and all three of our Bonnie environments will be shut down. Um, these tools will no longer be accessible uh, by any measure developers as well as our team internally. Next slide, please. So what this process looks like is different uh, for measures as well as test cases. I won't go into in-depth details here because this is actually one of the things I will be demoing. Um, but of note, for measures, we can transfer measures from Matt directly to Maddie via a push of a button within Matt. Um, after you have transferred your measure, you do get a success or a failure email um, emailed out to the email associated with your HARP ID. 
Um, there are a few limitations with this transfer, um, such as only the measure owner can transfer the measures. Um, and then inside the MADI user guide, we have a bunch of additional details about specific data that um, won't completely be transferred over and how to address that. Next slide, please. Okay, for Bonnie test case transferring and getting those into MADI, it is a little bit of a different process if you're looking at QDM test cases versus fire test cases. Um, so for QDM test cases, these are kind of our step-by-step -step instructions. Again, I will be demoing this today, so I won't go into detail. Um, but Bonnie will allow for bulk export of those test cases, and then users will then re-import them into MADI for QDM test cases. Um, there are some limitations on this import, um, specifically around when exported values, or excuse me, expected values are set. Um, in Bonnie, users are allowed to say, I anticipate that this uh, synthetic test case will meet my measure's initial population. That is an expected value. Um, and if there are differences with your measure in MADI compared to what Bonnie had that measure set up as, those expected values might not carry over. Um, again, the MADI user guide goes into much greater and better detail <laughs> than what I'm saying. Um, so definitely visit that if you have more, or more questions around it. We can move to our next slide. All right, so this is related to our fire test cases. Um, again, like I said, that process is a little bit different. We don't currently have a bulk import. Um, so we have that bulk export from Bonnie and then recreation in Maddie for those fire test cases. Currently for fire test cases in Maddie, we support a JSON format. So that bulk export from Maddie will export them in a JSON format. And then the users will create that test case in Maddie and then they will copy the JSON and paste it into the test case. Next slide, please. Okay, we wanted to touch on our MADI access. So next slide, please. All right, some prerequisites for MADI access is that we need um, a HICUS access role and profile or a HARP ID is what you normally hear it referred to as. If you are an existing Matt or Bonnie users, you already have one of these. You're good to go on this prerequisite step. Um, if you don't, you can definitely visit the harp.cms.gov to go about creating one. Then to request your Matty access, you need to log into that, HIC, that Harp account um, and request the Matty user role. Our amazing Matty security <laughs> help desk will review that role, and then they will either approve you or deny you. Um, most likely you'll get approved, don't worry. Um, once you are approved, an auto-generated email will be sent out to you knowing that you've been approved, and then you can go ahead and log in to Maddie. Um, logging into Maddie is in one of our amazing documents that we have, um, our access guide. So you can find instructions there to do that. Of note, we do require that you log into your MADI account every 60 days. Um, this is in alignment with CMS's security policy. So if you do not log into your account once every 60 days, you will be deactivated. Um, so you will need to re reactivate yourself um, should this happen to you. And to do that, you just kind of go through those steps of re-requesting MADI access. So you'll log into your HARP account and request that MADI user role. Next slide, please. All right, so now I am going to steal the screen and I am going to go through a Maddie demo for everybody. So let me share my screen. Perfect. Just making sure everybody can see the mat, correct? Yes. Yep. Perfect. Alrighty, so I am already logged into the mat here. Um, you can see I have a decent number of measures. They're all different test measures and whatnot. Um, 
different QDM, fire measures, all of the above. Um, so the measure that I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to transfer today is a QDM measure. And it is my introduction to Maddie demo measure. So I'm going to select this measure. Um, you can also do that down here in this My Measures tab um, if you wanted. I'm just doing it up here. Then I'm going to select Export and then Transfer to Maddie. And then Save or Open, either will work. And my measure is being processed and transferred over to Maddie. And I will receive an email when that process is complete. So now I will come over here and I will log in to Maddie. Um, like we said, you need that HARP ID. So let me type all of that in and sign in. Um, every Maddie user will set up a two-factor authentication, which you did not see because I just logged into Matt and had to do that same two-factor authentication. Normally, I would have gotten a screen that uh, asked for a code to be sent. Here is Maddie. This is our Maddie homepage. Um, you can see this introduction to Maddie demo measure here. Let me also grab that email. So you can see here, my measure was successfully transferred from Matt to Maddie. Um, and it'll give you the measure name, the version, and any CQL or and that measure CQL library name. So let's go in and look at this measure now. I'll select it and view it. So for those of you that might be familiar with Matt, this doesn't look drastically different. Um, a lot of things here are the exact same. You can edit your measure name, CQL library, your abbreviated title. We just have a bunch of different fields here, just different descriptions, definitions, a copyright field. All of this is just metadata surrounding your measure. Now I'll move over to my CQL editor. Here is what I am seeing. So you can see I have some errors here. This first error is related to this library. So this is also something people will need to take into account when they are transferring their measures from Matt to Maddie. If you have a standalone library that you yourself created, you will have to generate that in Maddie. You can see I don't have any errors around my Matt Global Commons because this is already a measure, or excuse me, this was already a library that was generated in Maddie. So I just need to generate this QDM demo library. So let me go through that process of showing you all what that looks like now. So I will come back over here. Oop. And I will go over to my CQL library. And I know I need QDM demo library. So I can come over here and I can search for that. And it is right here. For our libraries, we do not have an automatic transfer over to Maddie. So I will need to recreate this in Maddie. So this is my details. I'll come back over to Maddie, come over to my libraries tab, and I'm gonna add a new library. So I'm gonna copy my CQL or my library name exactly. Um, of note, library names must be unique in Maddie. So if there was already a library of this name, I could either reuse that library or I would need to adjust this library name. Then my model is gonna be QI core. And then my description is going to be QDM demo library. And then I'm going to say semantic bits as the publisher. And then we will continue. So now I have a shell library created. I can come in here and I can edit it. I don't have any CQL here. No problem. I'll come back over to the map, open my CQL library, and I will copy all of this. You can see I'm super really great at writing CQL here. Very much so a test library, <laughs> not real world library. I will copy all of that. I'll paste it in to my measure over here and I will save it. Now I need to go back out to my libraries tab. This is a draft. We can only include versioned libraries in our measures. So I will come over here and I will version this. I'm gonna create a major version and continue. So now I have version 1.0 of my QDM, oopsies, my QDM library. If I come back over to my measures, 
And then I view this, come over to my CQL. You can see here now, once it, it'll load here in a second, that I do not have any errors. My CQL is good because this library now exists. Of note, if you are actually in here copying, or excuse me, recreating and transferring these measures, we do have a known issue that you do have to come in and you have to make some changes to your CQL editor to be able to add test cases as well as export. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna simply add a space and I'm gonna save it. And that takes care of that problem for me. Coming over to our population criteria tab, all of this information was transferred over for me. I don't have to enter any of it. You can see here, all of this is blank because I didn't enter it in my measure in maps. Now for our test cases, we'll load this page. I don't have any test cases here. However, I know that I have these test cases for this measure in Bonnie. So let me come over to Bonnie. Log in here quickly. And this is that um, authentication that I was speaking about earlier. So I will receive a text here in a moment and I will enter my code. And you can set this up differently. You can set it up to email you. Um, we can use different authenticator apps. I personally just like the text message. So that is what I have mine set up for. Okay, you can see now here in my Bonnie, this is Bonnie QDM. So this is support for uh, QDM 5.6. If I scroll down to my introduction to Maddie demo, I'll open this. You can see I have 85 test patients. So I will click here. This is our test case action tab. I will come over here to export. It's going to export that for me. We're good. So now let me come back over here to Maddie and I can import test cases. So I'm going to select the file and then, oh, I lied to you. I forgot a step, my apologies. We need to, let me pull it up here so you guys can see it, um, go to our downloads and this is a zip file. We are only allowed to import JSON. So I'm gonna double click on this and it's gonna unzip it for me. Um, if your, uh, Ex, or excuse me, your operating system doesn't allow you to double click. Um, you can right click on zip. Um, there's plenty of different on zip uh, functionality, but mine just allows me to double click. And you can see that I have two files there. So now what I'll be able to do is I'll be able to select my file. And then I have too many in my downloads. This is the one I want. Yep. Okay. Or is it this one? I think it's the same thing. <laughs> I apologies. I was testing the demo ahead of time. I will select this and I will open it. Yep. And so you can see here, I have 85 test cases from this file and I will click import. And it's going to go about importing all of those test cases for me. So you can see 85 of them imported successfully, which is awesome. Um, sometimes if a test case cannot be imported, um, an example of that would be we require test case title and group, the combination of them to be unique. So if they were not unique, that test case could not be imported. And it would be, uh, I would receive a message stating this test case couldn't be imported um, due to no, not unique title and or group. So you can see here all of my 85 test cases. Now, something that is different about Maddie from Bonnie is Bonnie automatically ran those test cases through your measure. That caused a lot of performance issues in Maddie. So with, or excuse me, in Bonnie. So in Maddie, what we have done is made it so the users have to click run tests to see their things. Now, this is really scary because you're seeing here, oh my gosh, I had 100% coverage over here, but on this page, I only have 14%, what's going on? Well, if we come back over here, you can see the measurement period is set to 2026. If they come back in here, my measure measurement period is 2024. So if I come back here, 
And if I change this quickly, this should solve that problem. switch over to my test cases, you can see that flow right there. It's so much easier to go back and switch things in my measure to then come over to my test cases. Once I come to my test case, it does take a minute for that run test button to become enabled because it's loading all of those value sets and everything needed to execute those test cases behind the scenes. So we will give it a moment here while it loads all of that for me. There we go. I'll click run tests. There we go. Now I'm at 100% passing and 100% coverage. These are tabs. So if you click over here, you can see all of your different uh, populations and it shows you what is covered versus what is not. So it shows that highlighting. And then this is all of our test cases. If I wanted to edit a test case, I can come in here and I can click edit. And for QDM, it is very much a user, um, a UI interface here for our users. We can come in, we can change the date of the birth with a uh, date selector. We can come down here, we can add different encounters and select via the date encounters and all of that. I'm not gonna add one because this test case is passing as expected, um, but this is definitely a user interface uh, screen. Um, something really cool that we like a lot is that this is actually draggable. So the CQL, it can be kind of long. There's a complex CQL out there. I can drag it all the way over here so that I can see the different CQL. Or if I have a big element, I can drag it back all the way over there. And then I see this side of the screen much more clearly. We also here show our highlighting. So I can click my run tests. Um, and then you can see this highlighting as well as um, the different results. So this is the results of my initial population and all of the definitions used. This here is where we can set those expected versus actual values. And then our details, which is where our title, our description, and our group is set. So this is the flow, yes, discard all changes. This is the flow of transferring a QDM measure from Matt to Maddie and then importing those QDM test cases. I'm not gonna go through the flow of a uh, QI core measure. I do have one here that I did want to show you guys so that you could see kind of what that looks like in Maddie. So we will click and we will view it. Um, these screens look, Hardly any different. That is on purpose. We wanted the flow for QDM and QI core measures to be as seamless as possible. We wanted to make sure that um, user it was the same user experience regardless of what standard you were developing in. So again, here, this is our CQL. You can see a bunch of different CQL here. This population criteria tab is the same. This test case tab here, is the same. It is when we're editing test cases is where the difference will happen. So let me open one of these for editing. Here is where the difference lies. You can see that the this is not a user interface. It is a JSON editor. So users come in and they will type JSON here. Again, we know that uh, JSON isn't as useful as the user interface. Um, so we have a lot of really helpful resources, which I'll go over um, at the very end of the presentation um, to help users write these uh, JSON files. Um, and if you are exporting from Bonnie Fire and then recreating your test case here in Maddie, those will export a JSON file for each test case. And so it really is just as simple as selecting that JSON from that file copying it and pasting it in to your test case here. All of these other tabs though, look the same. Let me run our test case so you can see. 
these all look the same. Our expected actual, this looks different because this is um, a Boolean measure and my other one um, was not. My other was not a patient-based measure. And so I was looking for um, encounters in that measure. So I had one encounter for initial population. Whereas for here, this is looking at, um, did this test case meet the initial population? Yes or no. So that's not a difference between fire. That's a difference between the just Boolean versus uh, encounter. And then again, our details section there. Um, back out here, these are measures that I own or have been shared with me that I can see on this screen. So if a measure is on your My Measures section, it is a measure that you can edit, essentially. Then over here on our All Measures tab, this does take a little bit longer to load because there's much more measures. This is a list of every measure within Maddie. Um, so if there was a measure that uh, you needed to look at to reference for some reason, it could be found here. We can also search via measures up here. So for example, we'll just type in QDM and hit enter. And so now I've returned a list of measures that contain the words QDM somewhere within that title. There's 79 of those in Maddie at this point. Um, if it is a measure that I do not have the ability to edit, I can still look at it. I can still view it. I just can't change anything. So these fields are a little bit grayed out to make it noticeable that you can't edit it. And I just, I can't click into that field. Same with the editor. I can click in, but I can't, can't type anything. Test cases. Um, test cases do allow you to run the tests and see passing and percentage um, on the test case page without being an owner. I can't edit any of these test cases. However, I can run that test case and see what those results were. You can see here, this test case failed and this test case is invalid. What that means is that it just hasn't been filled out yet. Once you create that test case shell, you do have to go in and add some information to it, and it'll be invalid until that information is added. Um, I showed you guys the library section quickly already. Um, same thing goes here. The My CQL libraries are libraries that I own or have been shared with me that I can edit. The All CQL libraries is a list of all of the CQL, CQL libraries within Maddie. One of the last things I wanted to demo with uh, Maddie specifically before I turn the screen back over to our PowerPoint is that for this UMLS Active up here, when I logged into Maddie for the first time, this said UMLS inactive. I clicked on it and it popped up a screen for me to put in my uh, UMLS uh, ID, that really long number, and I inputted that and I logged in and Maddie will actually keep those credentials safe for you and it will log you in each time. So that is not something that you continuously have to do. Whereas in Matt, that's something you had to do every single time you logged into Matt. So if you timed out of Matt because you went and got lunch, you logged back in, you had to sign into UMLS. Um, so that is just another thing that we updated in Maddie to kind of ease the user burden a little bit. So with that, I am going to stop sharing and I will turn it back over to the PowerPoint. We can share that again. Perfect, thank you. All right, we can move on to the next slide. Yep, okay, so now I did wanna to touch briefly on the Maddie resources. Next slide, please. Our team has worked really hard to put a lot of really useful resources out for everybody. All of these can be found out on that Matt public website, um, specifically this Maddie MVP tab. Um, we, like I said, have a bunch of different really awesome things. Um, here you can find just a login button to Maddie. So if you didn't have that URL uh, favorited or whatever happened, you're on a different computer. That is where you can find a login button to Maddie. We also have that Maddie access guide, um, which is how to request a Maddie account that I referenced earlier. 
We also have our user guide. Um, this provides a lot of really in-depth detail regarding the tool functionality, um, specific examples about what can and can't be transferred, um, specific things on what to do if things go awry, all of the above. That is a really awesome resource. And that user guide gets updated every release. Another really useful thing that we have that I touched on briefly is a JSON test case guide. This is our steps for our users um, to help them enter JSON test cases with that fire test case editor. Um, like we said, we know that JSON is not something that quite a few people are very good at writing. It's not user-friendly, is not something that is easy to write or read. Um, so we did put this uh, test case guide out there to help users get kind of a head start on that. We also have a known issues document. This just lists all of our known issues that we are aware of in Maddie. This again is updated regularly. If we release Maddie and a uh, known issue is resolved, it's removed from that list. Um, if a help desk ticket comes in and we investigate it and we realize, yeah, that is an issue with Maddie, we add it to that known issues list. So that is something that is updated all the time and it's up to date as of when you open it. We also list out our release notes with every Maddie release out there. We release Maddie approximately every two weeks. Um, so with every release, we update uh, those release notes and that will specify what exactly we updated with that release. We also have the Maddie measure and library sharing request form. This is what you would fill out if you wanted to share a measure or a library with somebody else on your team. So the owner needs to fill it out and then submit it to uh, semanticbits-maddie-help at icf.com. And then we can uh, take that request and get those sharings done and then get it back out to you. Then we also have a Maddie measure or library ownership transfer request form. So should you own measures and you are going on extended leave or you accepted a position at another company and you need to transfer ownership to somebody else to work on that measure, um, that form is out there. Again, you as the owner fill it out and then you email it to semanticbits-maddie-help at icf.com and we'll take care of that transfer for you. Next slide, please. Perfect. Okay, this uh, goes hand in hand with that JSON document that I was referencing um, for QI Core test cases. And this is a QI Core profile examples. Um, so we created a measure in Maddie that has a bunch of, or a, one test case, I guess I should say, <laughs> um, that has a JSON bundle that contains entries for many of the QI Core profiles of note that's version 4.1.1 currently. Um, the purpose of this test case JSON bundle is to provide users a framework for a lot of those commonly used QI core profiles. So what users can do is they can go out to Maddie, grab that uh, measure, open those test cases, find the profile they need, copy that section of the JSON into their test case, and then they can update it to uh, reference specific dates that are relevant to their measure, um, specific encounters, uh, all of the above, but it gives people kind of a template to then fill out so they don't have to ensure that their brackets are in the right place or their commas are in the right place. That's all there and you just fill in that information. Um, it is important to know that this is just for guidance um, it won't fulfill any measure or testing requirements. It's just there for you to fill in the specific details of your test case. Um, yes. And so, uh, like I said, you can copy it from there and paste it into your test case, um, or you can use another source code editor, Notepad++, Visual Studio Code, make any updates you need, and then paste it into your test case. Um, and then again, we reference the, the test case JSON guide, which is available on that Maddie MVP tab. In that guide, it does reference um, this test case and it gives you more in-depth instructions on how to go about utilizing this profile example. Next slide, please. 
All right. So for all of you that joined today, we did want to kind of give you some next steps um, around Maddie. Um, so your first step, if you don't already have one, would be to sign up for a Maddie account should you want to start utilizing Maddie. Um, then familiar, familiarize yourself with the resources on the Maddie website. Then transfer any of your MAT measures and Bonnie test cases into Maddie. And then complete your work in Matt and Bonnie and ensure your measures and test cases are transferred before that June 28th date. Um, afterwards, you won't be able to access them. Um, and then we also just wanted to do kind of a shameless plug um, for our Matt, Bonnie, Maddie user group. So definitely register to attend that. Um, it's held monthly on the third Thursday of every month. And it is just a community of measure authors and testers. Um, and we give regular updates on Maddie. Um, we talk about the releases that have happened. This last user group, we went through a, some of uh, enhancement requests that we've been given and just talked with users one-on-one -on, -one on that call to see what they liked, what they didn't like, if they had any recommendations. So it's just a really awesome place to come and learn more about Maddie um, and share your thoughts. Next slide, please. All right, I will turn it back over to Haley because I think you were planning on leading the question and answer. Hello, yes. Um, thank you so much, Nikki, for the wonderful presentation. Um, we'll dive into our Q&A. There are so many great questions, so thank you for the engagement. Um, as a reminder, if you have questions, add them into the chat and we'll get to as many as we can. Um, I will direct you though, um, a lot have been uh, answered in a written form um, in the Q&A feature. So do take a look at those and that might um, help answer uh, some of your questions. So to start, uh, Nikki, we have a question. Um, where can I get more information on eCQMs and the development process? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, we recommend starting out on that ECQI um, resource center, which is ecqi.healthit.gov. Um, that gives so much really good information about everything um, ECQM related, um, just the whole process as a whole. So that would be our recommendation of where to start. Wonderful, thank you so much for that answer. Um, Another question for you. Um, as an ECQM end user of the specification packages, will the MADI packages look any different, have different contents than the MAT output? And if yes, if you could please explain. Also a great question. So the contents of the packages will be the same. The format for those QDM measures is slightly different. Um, if you were to export a QDM measure from a mat, the file structure is just one file. All of the files needed for that export just thrown into that one file. In MADI, um, if you were to export a test case, or excuse me, export a measure, um, it is a little bit more structured. Um, so we have different folders that kind of, um, what am I trying to say? that divide the data. So we have a CQL folder where any CQL files live in. Um, we have a resource folder where different uh, included libraries, their JSON and XML files live. Um, the QDM structure from MADI matches a lot more like the fire structure that both MAT and MADI export. Wonderful, thank you so much for that description. Um, and then uh, if you could expand, um, just what are some of the pros of using Maddie compared to uh, Matt and Bonnie? Yes. Um, well, I kind of alluded to it in my uh, presentation, um, but just really the workflow is a big pro in our opinion. Um, in Matt and Bonnie, it's very tedious to export, import, test edit, export, import, test, that flow. Um, it can take quite a bit of time just to change something from greater than to greater than or equals to. Um, whereas in Maddie, you can just switch to a different tab, change it, save it, back to test cases. 
Um, so it's much quicker. Uh, it's a much more uh, refined workflow. Um, and then just the overall way, the look and feel of Maddie. Um, and just we're trying really hard with Maddie to do that human centered design. Um, so we're constantly taking feedback from the users, which allows for a better user experience in Maddie. Thank you so much. Um, all right, another question. We're just gonna keep them flowing here. Um, if I'd like to start developing measures but have never used Matt or Bonnie before, where should I start? Great question, yep. Um, so that Matt public website, the Maddie training and resources tab is gonna be where to go. Um, the user guide is out there. Um, Albeit it's a bit of a dry read, I'll be honest, but it will give you a bunch of really good information on how um, to implement the measures in Maddie. Um, we also have some training videos out there that users can look at. Um, and there's a bunch of different community calls that users can attend for learning about how to create the content of the measure. Um, the Maddie team, we can't really help with that piece. We can just help with the how to create the measure. Um, but the measure development community, I'm sure as many of you know, is really awesome and is available to help with all of that other piece. Wonderful, thank you. And I, um, there was a great written question um, that we provided a written answer, but I'll, I'll just bring it um, to the forefront here. So someone asked, who are the intended users for these tools and any uh, specific use case examples? Um, and I think uh, Christina was uh, kind to answer, and she said, intended users are quality measure developers. Our tools are also used by measure testers and implementers, as well as reviewers, all part of the measure authoring workflow in an effort to get ECQM measures authored and tested. And I'll just pause there to see if um, our presenters have anything to add before we go to the next question. I don't have anything to add. Christina hit it out of the park with that answer. <laughs> all right. Great. Um, all right. And we are, um, we've had a few questions about measure confidentiality. Could you speak to measure visibility in the wider ECQM list? Um, so if somebody wanted to expand on that question, are we talking about the measures that get posted? So you haven't been monitoring the questions as closely as I, we have. I have not. I'm the sorry. Questions <laughs> seem to be, if you know yeah. <laughs> the questions seem to be centered around basically anything that I build in Maddie is available for anybody else that's in Maddie to see. And that that is the case at this point. Um, yep. Yeah, and, and our answer is yes, that's the case at this point. Um, if there is something else like requested, you know, feel free to, as always, go to our um, ONC JIRA um, issue tracker and have um, or enter uh, an enhancement request. So we take those enhancement requests very seriously and um, you know, we do some analysis on them and bring them up for prioritization with the whole community um, in some of our other meetings. So feel free to enter, you know, enhancement requests if you if you come up with some. Can I can I interject something? Sure, Sam. So Matt had the ability you could indicate as a user that you wanted your measure to be private. Is that on the backlog for Matty? At this point, Stan, it is not something that is on the backlog. Okay. Um, if users see the benefit in it, it is something that we can uh, get an enhancement request put in to ONC JIRA. Like Christina yep. said, we can get it out there. I thought I would follow up for the user just in case. Thank you, Stan. I appreciate it. All right, um, we probably have uh, time for another maybe one or two questions here. Um, so there was a question on since CMS IDs can no longer be generated in MAP for new measures, how do we keep numbers consistent between 
QDM and FHIR versions of the same measure. Um, so if we generate a new number on each version in MADI, then will we end up with different ID numbers? Um, and I think we had a written answer there, but just uh, opening that up to our presenters to expand upon. Yep, um, so I did not see the written answer. Uh, like Christina said, I've been very engrossed in presenting um, and demoing, so I've not been following the <laughs> questions uh, in the Q&A, um, but we can, um, so when we release the ability in Maddie to generate those ECQM IDs, we turn it off in Max to keep those numbers um, not overlapping. Um, in Matt right now, to keep those ECQM IDs the same between uh, QDM and FHIR, when you, or excuse me, when you convert a measure from QDM to FHIR, that CMS ID comes with it, and uh, FHIR is kind of tacked on to the end of it. Um, in Maddie, that is something that will be happening, um, that uh, tr uh, converting from QDM to uh, QI Core is something that we are beginning in the next couple of weeks, uh, starting implementing within Maddie. Um, that is a very big undertaking, so that won't be complete for a while. But once that is complete, those ECQM IDs or CMS identifiers will retain from the QDM and the FHIRE me measure. They'll be the same as long as you convert from QDM to FHIRE. Thank you so, so much for that answer. All right, I think that is all we have time for um, for questions today. We will post a question and answer summary on the MMS Hub in a few weeks. Um, so we will follow up with those if you know we didn't have a chance to talk about your questions today. Um, we'll be sure to share that resource um, in the coming weeks. So before we wrap up, I think we have a quick um, closing announcement and just really want to thank our presenters for um, the great uh, and informative presentation today. So um, just a quick announcement for, for those still on the call um, that CMS Merit closes for measure submission at 8 p.m. Friday, May 10th. Um, so check out the following CMS Merit resources to learn uh, more about the tool and the pre rulemaking process. Um, so we have those linked there um, and always contact MMS support um, if you need any um, anything else. Any uh, final words from our presenters? And if not, uh, we will wrap up and just uh, thank you all again so much. Thank you for letting us come and present. Wonderful. All right. Hope everyone has a great rest of your day.